Hello everyone, Lisa here. I wanted to share what Bethany and I created yesterday out in the studio. We love weekends because that's time that we can do other types of projects. I created a quilt block stained glass picture and I want to share that with you. I am so grateful for all of my subscribers, all of my friends that have joined me here on YouTube and I want to share this uh, PDF traceable with you so that you can create your own fun projects. How cool would this be to share uh, a stained glass picture as a birthday present? Uh, we have Mother's Day and Easter coming up. Just all different kinds of gifting ideas that you could give uh, something different, still quilt related, but something different to uh, your friends and family. I hope that you enjoy this printable. I would love to see your creations over on Facebook. So join me over there and share your pictures. We'd all love to see your creations. Uh, very budget friendly project. We used Elmer's clear glue and I'll go over the different things that we used. I'm going to also show you a picture now of another product that I like to use in my stained glass paintings. And I'll show you a, a picture of another painting that I've done in the past and the results that I get with this product. I love the Liquitex uh, gloss medium and those are the results I get with that. This we've used the Elmer's glue so again very budget friendly alternative and the results are awesome. I'm so pleased with this. Bethany and I had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy our little video and again if you create this I would love to see your pictures. Thank you all for subscribing to my channel. I read each and every one of your comments and I appreciate all of the feedback. Let's get creating. All right, we create all kinds of fun and interesting things on the weekends. Bethany has joined me today and she's already started way ahead of me only because I have to restart. So let me just catch you up to where we are. I went to the Dollar Tree and bought some picture frames 8 by 10 which is the perfect size for the printout. However, I messed mine up so I'm going to start all over again and she's going to continue on with hers. She is making a tie dyed stained glass picture today. So say hi Bethany. Hello. <laughs> and let's go over a few of the things that we're going to use in today's project. I like to use the puffy paint to do my leading on my painted stained glass. The bottles squeeze very easily and this flows very nicely on the glass. It lasts forever. So I've done some painted stained glass pictures about seven or eight years ago and they still look brand new so I really like using this. You can also buy gallery glass which is simulated liquid leading which is actually made to make painted stained glass. However the bottle is a little bit stiffer and the liquid inside is thicker and so it's hard for me to squeeze a nice pretty even line although this does give really nice pretty results. Today we're going to use the Elmer's washable clear glue to mix with our paints and I'm using the Reeves watercolor paints today and Bethany's using acrylic paints and um, what this actually does is the clear glue mixes in with the paint and makes it translucent on the glass when it's dry and so it gives a very very pretty stained glass um, effect when you're done and everything is dry. We're using little cups that we got from the Dollar Tree. We're using paint brushes and little stir sticks and we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing I do just to let you know this printable is uh, something that I designed as a free gift to all my subscribers. I am very thankful that all of you guys have joined my channel and so if you would like to make this project and paint along with me go to the description box below and there's a link to my Dropbox where you'll find this printable of this quilt block. 
we're going to go ahead and get started. I am working with a piece of glass that is 11 by 16 because I messed up my 8 by 10 glass. <laughs> so mine might look a little bit different than yours only because I messed up. So the first thing that we do is we take our puffy paint and make sure to shake it up really, really, really well. Make sure that the tip is nice and clean because we don't want anything to transfer to our glass. So I just like to wipe the tip off really well. And I like to make sure that the paint is down at the tip of the bottle so when I'm gliding on my paint, I don't get any air bubbles. Once you're ready to go ahead, get and go ahead and get started. Uh, the way that I do it um, is I make sure that the tip is touching the glass as I move along, applying really even pressure on the bottle, and I get a very very nice clean line that way. I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to outline this again. Mine might look a little bit different because I'm going to have to make it. Uh, sized up to the size of the glass I'm using. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get started. This is a really pretty color. going to go ahead and let this dry. Make sure that all of your lines are nice and solid. The lines actually keep your paint in the little areas. And make sure that all your points come together and touch adjacent lines. We're going to let this set up and dry and we will be back. Alright, because I am highly impatient, I use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. <laughs> now would be a good time if you have any little pieces that transferred from the tip of your paint bottle. Because it's dry, you could go in with your fingernail or something and just scratch off and clean up your lines pretty easily. And now would be the time to go ahead and do that. Now comes the fun part. We're going to go ahead and take a cup and we're going to pour some clear glue into our cup. And I'm not going to use a lot. Just like that. Just a little bit. And I'm going to decide which colors I want to use. I am using the Reeves Translucent Watercolor Paints today. I really like the effect that those give. However, the uh, acrylic paints that Bethany is using make very, very pretty colors as well. So you can use it with any types of uh, acrylic or water-based paints. I cannot decide on the colors that I want to use in this piece, but we're going to start with this color. Now earlier, I got about three quarters of the way done with my first one and I was pouring straight from this cup into the, the spaces and uh, I was being really heavy handed <laughs> and I was not waiting for the colors to dry before moving on to the next space directly next to it. And I was having a lot of running issues or bleeding. And so if you are impatient like me, pouring directly into this space might not be the best technique. 
However, it seems to be the easiest. It feels pretty easy to do it that way. But I get the best results dropping the paint in with a brush because it's a more controlled application. I'm going to take a brush that is dry and pick up some of my paint and just start going in and applying the paint and spreading it up to the lines. You want your paint to actually touch the black lines. Just like that. So, Bethany, have you had fun doing this? Um. <laughs> I kind of dragged her out into the studio today. Not really dragged. I wouldn't say dragged because she is a creative person. She likes to do creative things. but I think she would have had more fun if we were doing more of her genre type of artwork. What kind of things do you like working on, Bethany? I like to um, work with fur. I dye fur. And um, I normally work with pencils. I have a very shaky hand. That so runs in the family. <laughs> doing things like this results in this. <laughs> but I think yours is very pretty. It's very tie-dyed. And from this direction, looking at it this way, looks really swirly, but when you hold it up to the light, it is actually very pretty, so. We did decide that applying the paint with a brush is a uh, gives you more control over where it's going <laughs> yeah. and how much goes down onto the glass. So just like this, we add our colors. I do like to try to pop any of the little air bubbles that come up because those do show up after everything is dry. So once I get all my paint into the space, I'll go in and just touch the little air bubbles and it brings them out of the paint, just like that. I'm going to go, uh, go ahead and continue adding paint in different colors and we'll see what we come up with. All right, Bethany has already left me. She got done with hers about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and I'm still here, just tap, 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 tapping away. I filled in all the areas that I want color, and now I have this little border. But I don't want any color in that area, so I'm just going to use the straight glue with a wider brush and create some brush strokes with the clear glue so that it gives the appearance of an old piece of glass. And that's how I'm going to fill in this area here. I will pour some of that into a cup as well, just so I can do it a little bit easier. And now I'm just gonna finish this off by painting the border.
One thing for sure is we have made a big mess out here in the studio, but it has been so much fun though. That's why I love weekends is because we can just cut loose and create stuff and have fun. This is all wet. And because it's chilly today, it's going to take a while to set up and to dry all the way so that we can handle it. We're going to let these just sit overnight. I'll come back tomorrow after it's dry and I can touch it and we can put it in a frame and see what it looks like. This is our finished stained glass quilt blocks. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoy this printable and look forward to seeing you soon.